Babiseba maso chamina Yashinka niwe Babemo Kiti embe Onansi piesa Omani denga chinja mabu besi Embe Onansi piesa Omani denga chinja mabu besi The 2007 America's Cup will be remembered as the year that attracted the first entry from the African continent. The South African Challenge, Team Shoshaloza, comprised a very young team of sailors with virtually no America's Cup experience amongst them and only a fraction of the budget of the bigger teams. The South Africans made an impression on the creator of the Louis Vuitton Cup and three times America's Cup skipper, Bruno Trouble. If I, if I remember something, and I will, from this America's Cup, I think Shoshaloza was the best thing to happen for the America's Cup. And we, all, we will all remember uh, them from uh, when they arrived in uh, 2004 in Marseille uh, up to now. What they have achieved is really amazing. Shoshaloza mastermind and team leader, Captain Salvatore Sano, felt that the time was right to showcase the new South Africa to the rest of the world. I am Salvador Sarno, I'm 58. Everybody call me the captain, Captain Sarno. I am not a yachtsman, I am just a seaman. I love everything that has something to do with the sea. Why? Because I'm a dreamer. But without access to the money and the experience of the established players in the America's Cup, this campaign would have to be approached differently. This would have to be a team fueled by passion rather than paychecks. Having been involved with sailing himself, Captain Sano already had a few people in mind. I got all the sailors that I knew and I explained to them my idea. I warned them that they had to resign from their job. I told them that we, we would have been a, a small team with a small budget, but I promise you that one day President Becky will shake you your hand, will look you in your eyes and we tell you South Africa is proud of you. Captain Sano insisted that this should be a true South African campaign, so most of the talent is homegrown. But this was also a brilliant opportunity to bring another project of Sano's to fruition. Isi Vungu Vungu was one of the first ports of call for Captain Sano's team selection. Marcello Barrix, a youngster from Ocean View near Komiki, and the first and very promising student of the school was a natural choice. Mota Fall had never set foot on a sailing boat before and was working as a nightclub bouncer. Solomon De Piri and Golden Ngedeza are old school pupils of Ian Ainsley's. Both are from Kwatema in Gauteng. At 21, Reinhard Rauscher is the youngest member of any of the teams competing in the America's Cup. He applied to join Shorzaloza after reading that they needed heavyweight grinders and was accepted. Ashton Sampson was a natural choice for Captain Sano as he'd been crewing for him on smaller boats for several years. And so Team Shorzaloza was born. One or two professionals, a few passionate sailors and a lot of enthusiasm and determination. Undaunted by the fact that he had yet to sign a sponsor, Captain Sano ordered the purchase of an older second-hand America's Cup boat. Six weeks later, Luna Rosa became Shojoloza, Zulu 4 going forward. This is really the true start of the African Renaissance. Robin Island is the place where a man, our President Nelson Mandela, spent most of his life in his jail, dreaming for a, a new country, a better country, 
Shoshaluza is something that always I have dreamed to offer to him. I mean, Shoshaluza is, is a boat with a South, South African crew, the crew that I am sure he, was, he would have imagined. So what he was dreaming or imagining is on board today on this boat. was told that he would never get the boat or crew to the start line. Nevertheless, he began drawing the artwork that now sets Shoshaloza apart from the rest of the fleet, capturing the eye of the media and public around the globe. The Hal proudly displays a rich tapestry of African art, a union of Ndebele, Zulu and Kosa designs and has been described as an exotic bird of prey. The time was right to showcase the new South Africa to the rest of the world. And Sano's aim was not to take the America's Cup to South Africa, but to bring a part of Africa to Europe and the America's Cup. It's 10 o'clock in the morning and Captain Sano is pacing the corridors of the South African Parliament. You can't see guys. In a few minutes, he has to present the Shoshalosa project before a parliamentary committee. My friend. Hi, Captain. Oh, very good. Very good. Passion, your passion of this is absolutely wonderful. Yeah, exactly. Thank you very much for the, Thank you to you. For the He can count on the support of Andrew Mlangeni, a partner of Nelson Mandela's during the fight against apartheid. He spent 27 years with him in prison on Robben Island. This country is not a country for white people, and it's not even a country for black people, but it's a country for all those who live in it. I am sure that they will give me 100%, 200%. So, and it's their right to be there. Uh, and I think that that will help the, the young South African to, uh, to have the confirmation that this is a new country where everybody can, can work together as one, as the Shoshuza say. In September 2004, the inexperienced Team Shoshaloza went to Europe to start competing in America's Cup trials, known as the Louis Vuitton Acts, with the aim of simply getting to the start line and completing every race. Despite having the oldest boat and the smallest budget, the team flew the biggest South African flag and went about their challenge with infectious excitement, energy and passion. When we started in Marseille, we were rookies and we knew going there at that time was uh, for us was to see how they're doing things. Secondly, it was to show the world, to tell the world that there is a team Shoshaloza there and uh, we we there to race. Back home, the captain was battling to raise the money needed for the team to continue. The critics said that they were wasting their money, but the team noticed that anyone who got close to their project caught Shoshaloza fever. The underdogs of the America's Cup became the most popular team, featuring on all overseas television channels and newspapers, and even on the front page of the New York Times. Shoshaloza, Shoshaloza, Eventually, Team Shoshaloza received enough backing to be able to build a new boat. The new Shoshaloza RSA 83 was the weapon the team were looking for, but high hopes soon turned to frustration. We arrived in Valencia and the boat was not ready. We launched the boat at 7 o'clock in the evening and we had the first race at 11 o'clock the day after. To their dismay, they discovered that the vital hydraulic system was not working, a massive handicap. It's a bit like driving a car with only one gear. They did finish the race, but there was no way they could win. When I told to everybody, the other team, that we were racing without uh, the hydraulic system, they were telling me, you are crazy, it's not true. It's impossible that you race without the hydraulic system. And I was telling them, no, we can race because we are South African. We can do that. For week after week, Team Shoshaloza continued to be dogged by bad luck. They snapped their spinnaker boom. The main mast broke in half during a training session. And even on days when nothing went wrong mechanically, they continued to lose every race. Two skippers 
both of whom would uh, desperately like to win this one. And it's so hard to call. Right the way down to the wire, the closest race of the regatta so far. Wouldn't it be great for the South Africans to get a maiden victory in the America's Cup campaign? But the French determined to deny them. And in the final few meters, just pulling that little bit away. And it's going to be a French victory. They're third of this regatta. And still the South Africans will have to wait. The frustration in the team was palpable. But then, finally, came Act 6. Act 6 of the Louis Vuitton Cup took place in August 2005 at Malmo off the coast of Sweden. Sean Jalosa was pitted against the Swedish team competing in front of their home crowd. But it seems the months of struggle and practice were finally paying off. Sean Jalosa got off to a strong start and held on to their lead against all odds. For the very first time, they got to sample the sweet taste of victory. I cried. I cried on the boat. I remember I cried. And uh, I was thinking to my father that he passed away 30 years ago. And it was something fantastic. It had taken 25 races and almost an entire year from the first Louis Vuitton act in Marseille. In Trapani, Sicily, 500,000 people witnessed the opening of the last leg of the 2005 season. Their first victory in Trapani came on day two, when they beat the highly competent French team. The next day, they raced against United Internet Team Germany, and the race was dedicated to a special Schorschelauser supporter, Andrew Mlangeni, who spent over 26 years on Robben Island with Nelson Mandela during the apartheid era. Here they go for the final run into the start. It's going to be very close indeed. There's the gun and the Germans are to windward. They need to pull that mainsail in as hard as they can. There they are to windward and the South Africans to leeward. And I think the South Africans just did a slightly better job on that start. And Shoshaloza have an advantage of maybe one or two boat lengths at most. Shalos are doing a slightly better set on their boat. Oh my word, look at that! The spinnaker pole snapped like a toothpick right at the front of the boat. And look at it now, it is useless there on front of the boat. Drama on board the South Africans and this is really bad news for them because Ian Ainsley on the helm, he's looking behind and that's Dee Smith, the tactician. They're looking at Jesper Bank on the wheel and he sees a passing opportunity here for sure. In a critical situation, the South Africans try to recover their fortunes and finally manage to get their spinnaker back up. They will try to keep their short lead until the last turn around the buoy. However, Shoshaloza, weakened by the breaking of the pole, will run into danger. Their spinnaker lacking power, the Germans manage to catch them up. They're just a few meters apart. Oh no! Oh my word! That is a spinnaker has ripped to shreds! It's a disaster on the German boat! The penalty for the Germans is immediate. By the time it takes to get a new spinnaker up, Schoscheloza have cleared off. It's 200 meters to go to the finishing line. There's probably two or three boat legs in it. If the South Africans lose their spinnaker, then the Germans will definitely roll over and beat them. Oh my word, the, the Germans surging towards the line, but the South Africans are about two boat legs away. Give it a push. Give it a last push. Here we go. We're last looking push. for the last blue push. flag, yeah. and that is it. The South Africans have won. They have beaten. It was tough, uh, Jim. Yeah. Yeah, very tough. Great. But we made it. Great. So, so yeah. the South Africans made it. Yeah. And we'll yeah. meet again once more. <laughs> It's a wonderful feeling to see South Africa today being an accepted part of the international community. <laughs> During the apartheid years, South Africa was isolated. But the democracy that we have brought into South Africa has helped South Africa again to be accepted, to be part of the international community. We are very glad about that and proud. I'm proud today to be South Africa.
Team Shosholoza is now a serious contender with their sights set on a place in the semi-finals and on winning the cup itself. And who knows, with the right backup, anything is possible. Surely a step in the right direction was to secure a certain someone with connections in high places as the patron of the team. You guys are something else, aren't you, eh? Hey. <laughs> Next time you win, eh? <laughs> 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 bring, you bring the cup back. We are very, very proud of what you people have achieved. It's one of the greatest honors I've had. I've had one or two honors, but this is uh, one of the greatest uh, to be associated with yourselves. It's important, you see, it's important for our country. I am the patron. <laughs> One team, one nation, one dream. The team loves what they are doing and are proud of what they stand for. Whether they win or lose, their families, pets and their arousing Shosholoza song send them off and welcome them home daily, creating an atmosphere of pride, warmth and togetherness that is the envy of the other teams. Shosholoza, as Marcus Hutchinson, head of media for America's Cup Management said, they have brought a breath of fresh air to the America's Cup and have reminded us of what the event is all about. In 2006, Team Shosholoza defeated Italy's Plus 39 Challenge, the French Arriva Challenge, Desafio Espanol, Team China, United Internet Team Germany and Victory Challenge. Throughout their successes and amidst the glitz and glamour of the event, the South Africans have never lost sight of their responsibility to showcase the face of the new South Africa. This includes flying a spinnaker emblazoned with a giant AIDS ribbon to promote awareness of the serious pandemic in Africa. No longer just a colourful curiosity amongst the pros, the young team is now a force to be reckoned with and has done Captain Sano's adopted homeland proud. They trusted me, they left their job, we started and we are here, so imagine what there is here. A lot of emotion, a lot of uh, worry, but uh, I am confident that we will do well and our flag will be fly very, very, very high. The overall picture is one of a team that is sharp and ready as can be. No one says it's going to be easy, but then no one is looking too nervous either. They will fight very, very hard and they are not intimidated by the, the top gun. They will look them in the eyes and they will think we will beat you and we will do. Valencia, 31st of March 2007. A big day for Team Shojaloza, the only African entrant in the prestigious America's Cup sailing event. After three years of preparations and practice for the team and design and building of the America's Cup boat, the yacht would finally be revealed to the world. Shosholoza is a dream that started four years ago in order to show to the world the new face of their country after 10 years of non-racial democracy. Finally, it's race day. Three years of preparation. This is the start of uh, three years and also of uh, effort, of uh, sacrifice, 
now is our third, our moment of happiness. Okay, and we can be happy and we can be proud if just you do what you have learned to do in these three years. Remember what you promised me. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Plus 39, Arriva, Alinghi, Shoshaloza. Shoshaloza had a clean start, but spent most of race one near the middle of the fleet. For a while, the small Plus 39 team led the fleet around the course, with Shoshaloza near the middle and all the big names at the back of the field. Suddenly, in the final leg of the race, everything changed. Problem on China team, they've got a Jenica problem. Valencia Louis Vuitton Act 13. BMW Oracle Racing take the first blood of the regatta. Is that Shoshaloza yes. then? Shoshaloza take second place, Valencia Louis Vuitton Act 13. <laughs> Race 5 started with the wind now up to 17 knots, a wind range that is not ideal for the South African boat. This is the time where there is no room for error. With steady tactical racing, the South Africans kept themselves in the game with the top half of the field. All about free work now, all about free work. Socialiser, sign that third, victory. Great first beat for the South African team, just shows what you can do. Looking at Carl Jablonski on if Luna Rossa have slightly overlaid, this will be a lead change. Alinghi squeezing for the lead out tack. And they've sailed right round the chart. That's tacking very close. I think we're in for a penalty. No, penalty. Penalty to Alinghi. And while the lead changed, with Alinghi being forced to do a penalty turn after a very close tack, Team Shonjaloza kept a cool head and posted a neat finish in fifth place, a whisker ahead of the Spanish team. The Spanish boat, who's going to get there first as they go through? I can't call In the final two races of Act 13, the team managed only a seventh and a ninth place. But the overall result in the Louis Vuitton Act 13 was good for Shonjaloza. Sixteen April. The first races of the Louis Vuitton Cup were scheduled for this day. Everything was ready. At the regular morning meeting, tension was clearly written on their faces. Today we are participating to the Louis Vuitton Cup. You have done something fantastic. With the help of everybody, I think that we can achieve something that is written there from more than two years. And all of you, you sign it. Okay, that is... Uh, our goal is to be one of the top four challengers. The long-awaited first race day brought a mixed bag of results for Shoshaloza, with a loss against Sweden's victory challenge, but a resounding win over United Internet Team Germany. Team Shoshaloza was in business, and the Louis Vuitton Cup was finally underway. Shoshaloza's third race was scheduled against BMW Oracle, one of the top teams in the America's Cup. BMW Oracle comes up. Perfect start, quarter of a length behind. Shosha Loza at the windward end, just bouncing around a little bit as they stick around the windward end of the line, but slower. But incredibly, at the first cross, the South Africans snuck over the bow of the Americans to gain the lead. Yeah, Change sides. This is where the crew will be under pressure. This is Dixon's opportunity to come back at them. Lots of screaming. Oh, this is untidy. This is going to open it up for BMW Oracle. They were still ahead, but Shojoloza's lead had shrunk. When the Americans also caught a stronger breeze further out to the left, they finally thundered across the Shojoloza bow and took control of the race. Although ultimately not a win, this was a sign that Shojoloza had become a force to be reckoned with, and the boost to the confidence of the team was palpable. 24 April, Shonjoloza had two very different races scheduled. The inexperienced China team, which they should beat easily later in the day. But first, another one of the big favorites, the Italian Luna Rossa Challenge. A veteran of three America's Cup campaigns with a substantial budget. This will be a good start. The first hurdle was the pre-start, where the South Africans had to fend off repeated attacks by the confident Luna Rossa team. 
Starting almost together, Chanjuloza sneaked out to the left, taking advantage of the slightly stronger wind on that side and pulling comfortably ahead of Lunarosa before the first mark. Binica coming down, sucked into the... it's clean. They'll be all right, post the mark this time. No spinnaker in the water. Despite continued pressure, Chanjuloza also managed to keep their lead on the second upwind leg. Now it was just the final downwind run to go. Still, Chorgeloza's lead was not commanding, still a mistake. A badly executed maneuver or a tactical error could mean being quickly overtaken by the big Italian team. See, they've been locked together. But it's not for nothing that Team Chorgeloza has been training for three years. The crew held together beautifully, eking out their lead bit by bit. With a huge release of tension, they finally crossed the finish line, 36 seconds ahead of Luna Rosa. Yeah. Together with a win over China on the same day, the team was now in a good position. And suddenly, the crazy dream of the semi-final spot did not seem that crazy anymore. They were in seventh place, but the points difference to the teams ahead was still small. 29 April, the start of round robin two. The second race against Sweden's victory challenge was scheduled for Shorjaloza. This was a must-win race if the South Africans were going to keep their semi-final dream alive. It comes down. Magnus Holmberg comes up hard on the win. Victory challenge in the lure position. The race started off neck and neck on the first upwind beat, the lead alternating between the teams. Then victory challenge chose to bear off to the left and Shorjaloza held their course on the right. This brought the advantage to South Africa, who could run the top mark well ahead of the Swedes. Sailing slightly higher the mark so that they bear off. Chorgeloza's lead was not secure, however, as Victory Challenge managed to use a big wind shift to get ahead, with Chorgeloza in hot pursuit. The advantage line changed several more times, but then disaster struck. Nearing the bottom mark, the South Africans shattered their spinnaker pole as they rolled into a jive. They have broken their spinnaker pole on Shoshalosa around the four stage. Now this opens up an opportunity for the trailing boat as Victory Challenge thunders into their transom. Shoshalosa now is scrambling. This is a major handicap. Without the pole, the spinnaker is much less efficient and downwind maneuvers become much more cumbersome. But despite this, the South Africans kept their cool and their lead, but only just. You could hear the crack as that pole snapped in half. In the upwind leg, the spinnaker is not needed. Shorjaloza stayed ahead of the Swedes all the way to the top mark. But without a spinnaker pole, there was only one way the last downwind leg was going to go, to Sweden. That lead has just mushroomed out. Victory challenge from Sweden. Take the line. 5 May. Despite their best efforts, theoretically they could still reach the semi-finals, but the chances were becoming slim. The race against the Spanish Desafio Espanol became a must-win. If they lost this one, the points gap would be too big to make the semis. We're underway in our match of the day on the, on the Romeo course. After leading the start by one second, Chorgeloza kept the slimmest of leads to round the first mark just five seconds ahead of the Spanish. Absolute crunch match for both teams this time. Electronics are showing a lead change to Desafio Espanol. Despite continuing to fight all the way to the end, they could not regain the lead and Spain rolled to a victory of 47 seconds. Must win, did win. And that was that. Team Jorgelos are bowed out of the Louis Vuitton Cup on a high note following a win over Mascalzono Latino Capitalia, China team and the French Arriva Challenge in their final race of the 32nd America's Cup. The team sought after place in the semi-finals eluded them. But Team Jorgelos had won in so many other ways. Their African dream had become a reality. The world had been given a glimpse of the new South Africa and the team that, against all odds, dedicating over three years of their lives to bring glory to their country, had become the pride of Africa.